The top 10 ways to invest in yourself are the following, but first make sure to subscribe for more content on how to better yourself to become a future millionaire, trust me you won't regret it. Let's get it started. According to Michigan State University, and countless other scientific and academic sources, daily exercise has been linked to more energy, more productivity, reduced stress, improved brain power, better memory, and even increased creativity. It's the best way to maintain a healthy weight, improve your mood, ward off disease, combat mental health conditions such as anxiety and depression, and improve your focus. Harvard Business Review states that the benefits are so great that regular exercise should be part of everyone's job description. You'll be a better worker, a better team player, and a better problem solver when you make exercise a habit. You don't need to join a gym to exercise. You can exercise by going for a walk, doing yoga, or working out at home. Go dancing, swimming, for a hike, or take the dog for a long walk. It doesn't really matter what type of exercise you do as long as it's something you enjoy and can do most days. If you need help coming up with new workouts, you could try YouTube for new workout routine. It can also help to join a team. Research cited by Harvard Business Review found that exercise participants were more likely to keep going when other people depended on their participation, in other words, if you don't show up, other people will suffer. For example, if you're part of a soccer or volleyball team, you need to be there for everyone to succeed. You're more likely to go when you know other people will be negatively affected if you don't. Seminars, conferences, and workshops are excellent opportunities for investing in yourself for a few reasons. First, these events help expand your knowledge in an area or field you're already familiar with. Advancing your knowledge and skills can help you build expert status and make you more effective and productive in your current role. There are also great networking opportunities. Meeting and chatting with other professionals in your industry is a great way to make connections and friends or find a mentor who can help you in your career. You may love them or hate them, but the truth is that setting goals will help you accomplish more. Once you've identified a goal and written it down, you're more likely to change your behavior and take actionable steps to achieve that goal. Goals help clarify what you want. Instead of having a vague dream or occasional wishful thinking, setting a goal helps uncover what you truly want and, more importantly, it's the first step in figuring out what you need to do to get it. There are thousands of books and websites devoted to the art and science of goal setting, try Michael Hyatt's book Your Best Year Ever, a 5-step plan for achieving your most important goals and John Doerr's TED Talk Why the Secret to Success is Setting the Right Goals. No matter what you do, you already have and use a wide range of skills in your career and your life. But are you considered an expert in the skills or areas you rely on most? Probably not. Honing the skills you rely on most is one of the best ways to invest in yourself. After all, you already have a foundation of knowledge in one particular area. It's far easier to become an expert in a field you're already familiar with than one that you know nothing about. If the field you're in now is one you plan to stay in, then it's worth your time and energy to become the best at what you do. Daniel Coyle's books The Talent Code and Little Book of Talent are two great resources for learning how to build expertise efficiently to maximize your time. If the field you're in now isn't one you want to stay in, then analyze which skills will be useful in the field you want to go into. Skills such as strong communication, leadership, team building, negotiating, business writing, and public speaking are valuable in a wide variety of different fields. So focus on strengthening the skills you'll use in your next career or business venture to build your confidence and marketability. Another great way to invest in yourself is to keep learning throughout your life. Learning a new skill not only keeps your mind sharp, but it also adds yet another tool you can use to perform better in your career, qualify for a promotion, or even start your own business. First, think about what new skill would help you succeed in your current career or a career you'd like to have in the future. For example, learning more effective management techniques can help you create a more cohesive team. Getting more organized, or learning how to manage your time better, can help you get more done during the day. Learning public speaking skills can make you a more effective presenter when you're pitching ideas to your boss. 
Taking the time to learn a new language can help you land a new job or achieve a promotion. Look into services like Babbel who have over a dozen language courses you can take. You'll be speaking a new language before you know it. Other skills such as home repair, self-defense, gourmet cooking, playing a musical instrument, or learning to code may or may not affect your career, but they can add more meaning to your life and lead to greater overall satisfaction. You can also learn a hobby you can turn into a thriving business. One way to learn a new skill is to sign up for classes at a community college or trade school. These schools offer courses on nights and weekends, and many of their students are working professionals doing the same thing you are, trying to improve their lives and career prospects. You can also learn a new skill on your own by reading books or taking online classes through platforms such as Udemy or Coursera. Keeping a daily journal might sound like a surprising way to invest in yourself. After all, what will scribbling in a journal every day do to help improve your life? But daily journaling forces you to be more self-reflective. Writing out your thoughts and feelings gives you the opportunity to release them in a safe, non-judgmental space. According to the University of Rochester Medical Center, daily journaling can help you manage anxiety, reduce stress, cope with depression, prioritize problems and cope with fears, better identify negative thoughts and behaviors. Journaling can also help you cope with workplace burnout and stress because you can vent the frustrations and fears you feel while at work, whether you're dealing with difficult colleagues or even coping with workplace bullying. Writing your problems out on paper can also help you solve them more efficiently. Typically, we solve problems with the left side of our brain, which is known for logic and problem solving. However, the physical act of writing activates the right side of the brain, which is known for creativity and intuition. Writing out complex problems, then, can help you come up with a unique solution that might not have occurred to you if you were only thinking it out. Over time, daily journaling can help you develop more self-awareness, feel more gratitude, and identify dreams and goals you want to achieve in life. How is getting organized and decluttering all the things you no longer want or need an investment in yourself? First, being organized is a huge time saver. You'll always know where everything is, and you won't have to spend time searching for lost items or scrambling because you're late for another appointment. Second, it feels liberating to declutter your home and only own and use items that you love. When you own less stuff, you might even decide to downsize your home, and living in a smaller home can save you a significant amount of money in the short and long term. It can also free up your time to do things you love because there's less house to clean and maintain. If you're not sure where to start, read up on different organizing and decluttering approaches. The KonMari method created by Marie Kondo is incredibly popular for a reason, it's a disciplined yet highly effective method for getting your entire life organized. Pro tip, once you have items that you no longer want to keep, you can use declutter to sell them for cash. We all have bad habits. Some of us shop too much, while others drink or smoke too much. Some of us don't get enough exercise, while others eat too much fast food or procrastinate. You might bite your nails, spend too much time on your phone, watch too much TV, or obsess over your worries at night. Only you know what your bad habits are. They're the negative behavior patterns that hurt your physical, emotional, or social well-being. And if you're like most people, you have a long list of things you'd like to stop doing. Making an effort to break your bad habits can be incredibly liberating, and when you replace a bad habit with a good one, such as exercising consistently or getting enough sleep, it can transform your life. Breaking a bad habit takes energy and persistence. It also helps to have a plan. Unfortunately, leisure reading is at an all-time low. According to the National Endowment for the Arts, only 43% of Americans admitted they read for pleasure in 2016. The Bureau of Labor Statistics 2017 American Time Use Survey found that, on average, women spend around 33 minutes per day reading, while men spend 22 minutes. Of course, that's the mean average. If you're employed full-time, you only spend around 16 minutes per day reading. We're reading less as a nation, but we shouldn't be. Reading offers many important health benefits and is a great way to invest in yourself. According to research conducted by Yale School of Public Health and cited by Reader's Digest, 
people who read 30 minutes per day for several years lived, on average, two years longer than those who didn't. Reading also keeps your brain healthy because it helps forge new pathways in all four areas of the brain. Over time, this stimulation and strengthening can help keep you sharp as you age, and according to ABC News, it might even reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease. Reading books is better for your brain than reading newspapers or magazines because it forces you to use critical thinking skills and make connections from one chapter to the next. This deep reading can help promote quicker thinking and help prevent cognitive decline. Reading can also help you develop more empathy and compassion and, according to research cited by The Atlantic, can help increase your tolerance for uncertainty, which can help you take more risks at work that might pay off in your career. So how can you read more books? First, set a goal. For example, start by reading one book a month and devote at least 30 minutes a day to reading, perhaps right before bed. You could also use reading, which is a good habit, to replace a bad habit, such as watching too much TV or spending too much time on your phone. Instead of watching TV or scrolling on your phone when you have some free time, force yourself to read for at least 30 minutes first. Many people think they're not creative because they can't draw a portrait or write a piece of music. However, that's a very narrow way to look at creativity. Humans are, by nature, creative beings. Everyone, including you, is creative in some way. There are creative accountants who come up with inventive and fresh ways for their companies to save money or invest it, creative sales professionals who find new and exciting ways to make great presentations, and creative managers who find novel solutions to old problems. Parents rely on creative thinking all the time. To prove this, watch any parent stop a crying three-year-old in the grocery store without resorting to candy. At heart, creativity is about solving problems or giving people a new way to look at an old or established idea. Learning how to be more creative will strengthen your reputation at work and bring more meaning and fun into your life. You can learn how to access your creativity, just like you can learn any other skill. Start by making a list of some creative projects or hobbies you've always wanted to do. Take a painting class or learn to draw. Start writing short stories, take an improv class, or learn how to make puppets. It also helps to just do random things, like doodling with your eyes closed or speed writing about whatever comes to your mind, without stopping to judge or edit what's on the page. You can also play with your kids. Kids are the world's experts on creative thinking and we could learn a lot if we looked at the world with their same wonder and curiosity. There are several great TED Talks on how to be more creative. There are also plenty of books to help get your creative juices flowing. Thanks for watching guys, remember to like the video and subscribe for more videos like this one, see you on the next one. Bye.